Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, 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 it's your main man, Coach Eric Schwefel, coming at you with another episode of Unlocking Excellence. I hope you're ready. I hope you're set. I'm excited about this one. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about, and it's, 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 it's going to be a good one. So hopefully you've been enjoying the last few podcasts. We're right at the beginning of the new year here. I record these a little bit early, and I was thinking about different subjects uh, different subjects that we can have for today's podcast. And one of the things that popped into my mind right away was Jim Rohn, the great Jim Rohn, his quote, you are who you surround yourself with. I believe what he actually said is, um, look at the five people that you surround yourself with, look at the five people that you surround yourself with, and that's who you'll become. Something along those lines, right? It's essentially that you start to become your environment. You start to think and act like those around you. You start to have the same mannerisms, the same actions. You start looking at the world through that same perspective. So what's super, super important is that you want to surround yourself with individuals that you want to model and you wouldn't mind sharing some traits with, you know, not necessarily being all the way like them, but definitely sharing some traits of these different people. And I believe as we get older and older, well, from the very beginning, right, when we, when we first are born and who we hang out with when we're younger, these all determine future, future actions and future scenarios and opportunities that we get in. But it even becomes more and more important whenever we get older in order to surround ourselves with these like-minded individuals and these people. So I'm sure that you've heard of this before. And if you haven't, then I am so honored and so thankful to, to be able to share this with you. So if you're ready for it, we're going to dive straight into it. I hope that you've had a great day so far. I hope that you've thought of the 30 things that you're grateful for, that you've thought of a few different victories um, that we had that you, you've had over the, the last few weeks. Let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So I want to read you a couple of a different quotes here, and hopefully it's going to get you a little amped up. So you are the sum of who you surround yourself with. Surround yourself with people who have dreams. Surround yourself with people who desire, who have desires, who have ambition, and who will push you, they'll push you and help you realize your own. Surround yourself with dreamers and the doers and the believers and the thinkers. But most of all, surround yourself with those who see greatness within you, even when you don't see it within yourself. Surround yourself with people who can speak light into your darkness, who can help you see the beauty within yourself when you've lost sight of it. People who will remind you of your worth when it seems as though you have forgotten it and forgotten to see the depths of your own value. Make a conscious effort to surround yourself with positive, nourishing, uplifting people. People who believe in you, encourage you to go after your dreams. Applaud your victories. Surround yourself with people who push you to do and be better. No drama or negativity. Just higher goals and higher motivation. Good times and positive energy. No jealousy or hate. Simply bringing out the absolute best in each other. Surround yourself with people who make you happy. People who make you laugh. People who help you when you're in need. People who genuinely care. There are the ones worth keeping in your life. Everyone else is just passing through. You're a product of your environment. Surround yourself with the best. Surround yourself with good people and good things will happen. The better you are at surrounding yourself with people of high potential, the greater your chance for success. John Maxwell said that one. Kid Rock said this one. Surround yourself with good people. Whether they're the best or not, people are capable of learning if they've got good hearts and they've got good souls, right? Five types of people you want to surround yourself in with in life is the inspired, the passionate, the motivated, the grateful, and the open-minded. It's funny how your qualities of life improves dramatically when you surround yourself with good, intelligent, kind-hearted, loving people. I'm going to say that one again. Funny how your life, funny how your quality of life improves dramatically when you surround yourself with good, intelligent, kind-hearted, loving people. Surround yourself only with people who are going to lift you higher. The better you are surrounding yourself with people of high potential and the greater your success, the chances of your success. I, I read that one. So 
Y'all, it is so important. That was several, several different quotes through several different authors and speakers and, and people of the like who have known and learned the importance of surrounding yourself with these individuals. So we're going to break this down, right? So think about the top five people. You can write this down if you want. If you're driving, of course, don't do this. But if you're, if you're, if you're sitting down, then please grab a pen and a piece of paper and write down the five people that you spend the most time with right? Might be your parents, might be friends, might be siblings, might be your spouse. Those five people that you spend the most time with, right? We're going to write down a whole bunch of different things. Now you can look at those and you can assess each person and see if they're a positive or a negative influence, what they've taught you, what you've taught them, how you've learned from them, how have these people benefited you, right? And then you can also write down a list that says, well, how could, how could you want these people to improve? And those are things that you can do for yourself. So we're, we're going to get to that in a second. So let's, let's keep breaking this thing down. So not only is it the five people that you spend the most time with in general, right? Like the most amount of time with, it's also the people that you spend the most amount of time with at work. It's also the people that influence you at your gym. It's the people that influence you in your social life. It's your family. It's your own kids. It is extended family. It's the people that you talk to on the street, which sometimes you can't really help who you, who, what strangers you talk to, right? And it's how you engage with them. So when you surround yourself with these people, there are a couple of different qualities that you want to look for within, right? You want to see, you want to, you want to know, and you want to be able to determine, are these people more positive or more negative? Because there's nothing wrong with being negative. We need to have negative in order to have positive. But do they stay there? They stay there. Do they stay stuck? Are they in a, what, we, what we've called here in this podcast, a disempowered mindset? Are they those people? Do they constantly have something to complain about? Do these people, when you ask them, hey, what's good in your life? They say something, but then they negate it by saying, but this happened or this negative thing or that negative thing. Listen to people's language, y'all. Listen to people's language and you'll be able to see whether or not this person's a positive person, a negative person, whether they think effectively or they don't think effectively, whether they are more victim oriented or whether they're more victor oriented, right? You'll be able to test that out. So that's one of the first things that you want to check out is how is this person showing up in your life? Because believe me, there are quite a few relationships that you have right now that are not functioning as optimally as they could. They're bringing you down. I'm telling you right now, there are relationships that you have, that I have, that are bringing us down. And we get the chance and we get the opportunity to change those now and to negotiate how those are going to be. It doesn't mean you have to get rid of the person right away, especially if one of those negative influences is a family member. What that allows you to do is it allows you to set up different boundaries because boundaries aren't necessarily just for that person, right? But they're also for you so that you can remain yourself, right? That's what's important. So are those people a positive influence in your life? Are those people making you happy or sad a majority of the time? Notice how you feel around these different people. Do you feel good? Do you feel authentic? Do you feel like you can be yourself? Do you feel and think and know and notice what words are exchanged between you two? Is it more anger? Is it more happiness? Do you also, what actions do you take together? Do you mainly just chill out and do nothing? Netflix and chill, couch potato? Or are you active with each other? Do you eat junk food with each other? What influence is this person having on your life? Is it more positive or more negative? Now, as you start to examine these different things, you can even, and, and I don't want to call this judging because you're not judging, right? But you're examining and you're analyzing, is this person's lifestyle and choices and actions that which I have in my life, right? Think back, maybe your parents when you were younger told you, I don't want you hanging out with that kid, right? I don't like this kid. Now there can be different reasons for this happening. Some of them may not be as, as, um, reasoned by different evidence as others, but there are certain feelings that you get about different people, right? And you can kind of tell who are the troublemakers and who aren't. Well, in school, parents know, parents know best, right? Most of the time. And they might say, hey, I don't want you hanging out with this kid. They're a troublemaker. We tend to follow our groups and our peers. 
we tend to follow whatever energy is there, right? I'm sure you have heard of the, the, the phrase, if they told you to jump off of a cliff or jump off of a bridge, then would you? You see, sometimes what happens is we get so caught up in this group dynamic and the way that the individuals within our group think and feel and what the group wants to do that we lose ourselves in it. And that's why it is so important to find yourselves with those individuals, those free thinking individuals. So what type of influence do they have in your life? Do they bring you down? Do they bring you up? Do they make you happy? Do they make you strive for your goals? Do they hold you accountable to the things that you want to do in your life? If they don't, it might be time to reevaluate your friends and who it is that you keep in your life. If they, especially, especially if you're looking to grow and you, and they are staying exactly where they were, you need to have that growth in your life along with those who will push you to continue to grow. It's plain and simple, right? It's plain, plain and simple. So not only that, right, but you can look at their health. You can look at their habits. One thing that I see a lot here um, where, where I'm at in the United States is we have a lot of people who enjoy drinking. And when we surround ourselves with our loved ones, it's mainly around food and alcohol. It's not like we go for walks with each other. It's not like we go running or activity. Most of the traditional, most of the family, most of the get-togethers are surrounded by food and alcohol. And when you're there, you see people eating, you want to keep eating because your focused attention isn't on the food, it's on the engagement of the people. So you end up eating more and you develop negative or bad, unhealthy habits with others around because we aren't necessarily thinking of ourselves or our bodies or the way that it's going to make us feel. We're enjoying a time with others and we don't want to miss out on that, right? We want to be included because being different isn't applicable to a group dynamic, right? Not in most cases anyway. So with that being said, take a look at your surroundings. Take a look at the people in your life. Are they crabs in a bucket? You see, there was once this man who was walking down the street, or excuse me, by the, by the lake, not down the street, down the sidewalk by a lake, by a body of water. And he saw a fisherman who had just come back and from, from fishing and from crabbing and all this good stuff and from being out on the water. And he saw that he had an open bucket there that was filled with crabs and he had a, 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 a bucket with a lid as well. And he could see that bucket was moving, so he could only assume that there was fish in there. Well, when he and his wife were walking, he looked, and he couldn't help but stare at this fisherman's boat in the bucket, and he saw the crabs that were trying to escape. And as he was worried about it, he was like, he told his wife, he said, look, and she says, well, if you want to tell the, the man something about it, tell him. So he does, and the man says, oh, there's nothing to worry about, just watch. So he tells the man, hey, you have your crabs in a bucket, they're about to come out. Fisherman says, no, they're not, just watch. And when that crab gets to the very tippy top, and he's about to get out of the bucket, one of the other crabs at the bottom, they snip his, they grab his leg, right? They grab his leg and they pull him back down and they pull him so until you can't see him anymore and he's back at the bottom. You know, you don't want to have crabs in your life. You don't want to have people that when you get to the tippy top, they start bringing you down with their thoughts, with their actions, with their habits. You don't need to surround yourself with that. Sometimes it's like being stuck in the mud, right? I don't know if you've ever done those adventure races or you've gone hunting and you've gotten in too deep of mud. Sometimes we are stuck in the mud. And what would you rather? Would you rather have a friend who's going to try to get you out of the mud? Would you rather have a friend who's going to stay stuck in the mud with you? And then they're going to try to get out of the get together? Or would you rather have the friend who stays stuck in the mud and then complains in the mud and doesn't do anything about it and waits for you to do something and that helps them? I mean, the call is really yours with who you want to surround yourself with, but it makes sense right? It makes sense to have those that support you in your life and to have more of them than not. Now, what happens when you have these people in your life, you're there, and maybe it's a family member that you have to talk to and that isn't supporting you and is more unhealthy and toxic than you would like? You get to have a conversation with them. Oh, what? You get to have a conversation with them and you get to establish this thing these things. One thing that I like to tell and talk with my clients about is asking, always ask questions. Are you open to having a conversation about X, Y, and Z? Yes or no. 
okay, then right off the bat, if they say yes, okay, then you tell them about what you're feeling, not anything about them. I've been feeling X, Y, and Z about X, Y, about A, B, C. And this is what it makes me feel. I've been feeling X, Y, and Z about A, B, C. Yes. So then are you open to hearing why? The person might say yes, right? Always ask, always ask, because then that gives them the chance to say, I am listening. It gives them the chance to be receptive. And then you just have an honest, cool, calm, and collected conversation like an adult. There's no need to yell. There's no need to get emotional behind it. You just ask and listen. And if they're open to receive, then you give. But if they're not open, it's like giving a gift to somebody who doesn't want a gift. They're going to give it right back to you. They're going to give it right back to you in the way that you gave it to them, maybe even more if you trigger something, right? Or if something gets triggered for them. So you're surrounding yourself with these people. You're not surrounding yourself with crabs. You're surrounding yourself with people who will uplift you. You are surrounding yourself with people who will help guide you in times of trouble, who will help you and will be there for you and hold you accountable and cons- and, and teach you and, and help you be consistent and persistent to your potential, to your goal. You see, I think it's interesting as we grow older, we start to realize certain people need to stay in our life and certain people don't need to stay in our life. And you can see and you can, you can make judgment of the character that somebody is, right? If you know of somebody who has gotten big into illegal drugs like heroin and cocaine and LSD and MDA, all, you know, all that stuff, and you're not into that kind of thing, you need to set some boundaries so that those types of things don't come into your life. If you don't like the drama that people bring, because believe me, it's like, it's like high school stays like high school when you start growing older. If you don't like that, then you need to get yourself out of those situations and not surround yourself with those that have and talk about drama and other people. You want to surround yourself with people that talk about ideas, who talk about actionable um, actionable plans, who talk about maybe if it's, if it's in your alignment, who talk about making money who talk about the things that you're interested in and who can add value to that and who don't degrade you or the things that you enjoy and talk it down because it's not part of their perspective and it's not part of their world. You see, I was talking, I I take martial arts and I do martial arts once a week. That's it right now. I used to be a black belt in Taekwondo. Now I'm doing something called Silat Tekbi. And I talked to my guru and, and I, you know, we have great conversation. It's just, it's just we two. And I told him the other day, I said, you know, I think it's funny if you put all of my friends in one group, like they all had one party, all of my friends, I don't think a lot of them would get along with each other. And I say that because I have a very diverse group of friends, right? If it's for martial arts, I have friends that are for for martial arts. If I have weightlifting, then it's weightlifting. And those, they might want to talk about nutrition, but I have those that are a bit more emotional and like to talk about emotions and mindset and psychology. I have my friends that I just chill with and I have friends that I've had for a very long time, over 15 and 20 years that can talk to them about anything. I have friends that can just call up and they'll be there at the drop of a hat. I have friends who love me, man. And I have, and my friends know that I love them and to be able to, to express that and to have that depending on who it's with, it makes a big difference, right? It makes a huge difference to have that support system. So how can you find these people in your life? It's like wisdom. One of the best ways to get wisdom is through experience and through choice and through learning through your choices. You can't always read a book, judge a book by its cover. So spending time with somebody, investing in somebody. But I think the greatest and the first place to start would be with yourself. You need to find out what you like. What is it that you like to do and you like to enjoy? How can you fill yourself up emotionally? How can you fill yourself up without anybody else? Because when you can do that, you become dangerous. And I mean dangerous in the sense that you don't need anybody in order to function in life, right? You can do this thing on your own. It's just that you don't want to do it on your own. That's why you choose to surround yourself with people that that end up making you grow and making you better. So once again, how do you find these people? It's through experimentation. You're not going to find, you may not, right? You may not find people who are super ambitious 
and are driven in the club down the street? You may, you may not. I have no idea. You may, you may not. You'll probably find those people at the gym or if people still go to the library. You have Facebook groups and you have groups online that are specifically dedicated and niched to certain things. I'm in a Facebook group about people with people who are interested in Wim Hof's breathing method. There's like 15,000 people in there. You just got to spend time and invest not only in them, those people that you're looking to befriend, but also with yourself. And, and here's the thing, right? Give people benefit of the doubt. Look out for the red flags. Be skeptical, but listen. There are a few things that you need to remember, right? Be impeccable to your word all the way through. Don't make assumptions about these people. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Don't make assumptions. Humans love to make assumptions. We love to think just because this person la looks, acts, and talks like me, they must be like me. It's not the case. Don't judge a book by its cover. Read it a little bit. See if you like it. Most people try to get in bed and marry strangers right off the bat in friendships. Have a little time. Date a little bit with friends, right? Date your friends a little bit. If you don't like the way that your friends make you feel, don't surround yourself with them. So <laughs> with that being said, let's start to wind it down. The transformational takeaway for today is is evaluate and reflect upon who you spend the most amount of time with and take action dependent upon that. So what does that mean? It means take the time to design your friendship groups. Take the time to design your friendship groups to see, do I really want, still want, this person in my life. I like having mentors and I like having models and I like evaluating and I like studying people. And I like trying to think the way that other people think just to see what's it like, right? Find friends that are open. Do that yourself. You don't have to be creepy about it. Don't be creepy about it. <laughs> but reflect on that. Because the difference between you, where you're at now, and where you want to be could be getting rid of some people in life and adding some new ones in. It's like habits, right? The reason why you haven't gotten the six pack that you want or the money that you want or the results that you want is because you haven't developed the habits in order to get it yet. It's not because you're not good enough. It's not because you're a bad person or whatever it is that you think. It's because you don't have the habits yet. You haven't developed the habits yet in order to get the result. That's it. So one more time. Surround yourself with people who are going to push you towards greatness. The better you are surrounding yourself with people of high potential, the greater your chance for success. Surround yourself only with people who are going to lift you higher. You know what's funny? It's how your quality of life improves dramatically when you surround yourself with good, intelligent, kind-hearted, positive, loving people. There are five types of people that you want to surround yourself with. It's the inspired, the passionate, the motivated, the grateful, the open-minded. You want to surround yourself with people who make you happy people who make you laugh, people who help you when you're in need, people who never take advantage of you, people who genuinely care. They are the ones worth keeping in your life. Everyone else is just passing through. Remember to surround yourself with good people, whether they're the best or not. People are capable of learning if they've got good hearts and they've got good souls. Surround yourself with good people and good things will happen. Remember, you're a product of your environment. Surround yourself with the best. Surround yourself with people who will make you happy, people who will make you laugh, people who will help you when you're in need, people who genuinely care. They are the ones worth keeping in your life. Everyone else is just passing through. Surround yourself with people who push you to do and be better. No drama or negativity. 
just higher goals and higher motivation, good times and positive energy, no jealousy or hate, simply bringing out the absolute best in each other. Make a conscious effort to surround yourself with positive, nourishing, and uplifting people. People who believe in you encourage you to go after your dreams and applaud your victories. Remember to surround yourself with people who will speak light into your darkness, who can help you see the beauty within yourself when you've lost sight of it. People who will remind you of your worth when it seems so as though, when it seems as though you have forgotten it, forgotten to see the depths of your own value. Remember to surround yourself with the dreamers and the doers and the believers and the thinkers, but most of all, surround yourself with those who see greatness within you, even when you don't see it within yourself. Surround yourself with the action takers. Remember, you are the sum of who you surround yourself with. Surround yourself with people that reflect who you want to be, how you want to feel, because energies are contagious. And quick little ending, a little PS. Who are you to those people? Are you an unhealthy influence? Are you a toxic influence? Are you one of those people, and I say one of those people very loosely, that are crabs? Are you crabby? Do you bring people down? Are you negative? Do you complain most of the time? Is life just terrible whenever somebody asks? Can you always find something wrong? Maybe shift that. Maybe shift that from always finding something wrong to looking for the things that are right. Be the person that you want to surround yourself with. It's all about attraction, right? It's all about your vibe. It's all about where you operate from, your inner stance. What do you feel and think about yourself? Don't be a crab. All right. So y'all, the transformational takeaway, surround yourself with good-hearted people, kind people that will uplift you. Be a kind person that will uplift others. I hope you have a great day. If you want to hear more content, check out a couple of the other podcasts that we have. You can hit subscribe. We're all over the place. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. Uh, We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. You can check all those links down at the bottom. Um, If you got something out of this, then I would really, really, really appreciate it if you if you not only subscribe, but if you shared this out on a social media page, you can tag us at underscore Schwefel or excuse me, at Schwefel underscore strength. I'm sure you can see that in the information below. And I think that's it, man. I've really been enjoying this. I hope you have too. Please let me know. I hope that you have an amazing day, an amazing year. And there's one thing that I need you to know. I need you to know this. You're unstoppable. Nothing can stop you. Believe that. Believe that. And with that being said, I want to be one of the people that you spend the most time with, right? Because I want to impact you positively. I want you to have a wonderful life. I want you to be the best that you can be. I want you to unlock the excellence that you have within you. I hope you have a great day. I love you. We'll talk later. Peace.